You're listening to the Action Request Show with Nick Collins. This is Up FM 107.5. Welcome back to the At Your Request show with myself, Nick Collings. Now on the phone line is a man. His name is Grant Smiley. Now Grant Smiley resides in Melbourne and is one part of Australia's record-breaking house music duo, TV Rock. Now as TV Rock, he has spent the longest time inside the Australian top 10 charts in history. TV Rock won two ARIA awards for their debut single, Flaunt It, back in 2005. Since then, TV Rock have also achieved eight number one ARIA club chart positions and have remixed the likes of Axwell, Calvin Harris, Dirty South, Armand Van Halden, Tiesto and Fetty Legrand. He was runner-up as well in the Clio Bachelor of the Year for 2007 and again nominated in 2009. He was the GQ Magazine's DJ of the Year in 2008. Now Grant hosts one of the most popular radio shows on Australia's Nova Network. He co-runs Neon Records and recently he released his latest mix CD, Neon Essentials 10. Grant, welcome to Up FM. Oh, thanks, mate. What an introduction. I uh, I think the highlight in there was the uh, the runner-up and the clear bachelor of the year. So it's certainly been pinnacle of my life so far. <laughs> That's all good. Now, it's a pretty darn impressive resume you have for your time, uh, especially as part of TV Rock. But long before the days of TV Rock, you've been DJing and making your own tracks. Where did it kind of all begin for Grant Smiley? Yeah, it's a good question. I think um, music's been in my blood, you know, my whole life. I I played sax for eight years when I was going through school, and when I left, uh, I, I was sort of I had to be eighteen. I, I was, of course, you probably are uh, there as well to get into into clubs, and I was seventeen at the time. And all my when I finished, I was one of those early finishers from school. So the only way I could get into nightclubs was actually to go and work in them. So I used to um, I started running a night at a club, and I was seventeen, and. Um, I sort of just got, I loved the energy that you get out of a room when uh, people were playing records and one day someone didn't turn up and so I just covered for his shift and that was my first DJ shift and from then on I just realised I wanted to be uh, playing music and uh, making music and so it's been one of those journeys. I did go and uh, my mother did say to me uh, that I had to go and uh, get a university degree because I couldn't just rely on music to, uh, to make a revenue so I did that at the same time but ultimately it's turned out that I could. What did you uh, go and get a degree in? I've got a management marketing double degree. Uh, excellent. Have you put it to good use as part of TV Rock as well? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, it's been one of those things you, you might not sort of realise it on a day-to-day purpose, but, um, you know, it's just the way that you think about you, you, as a business as opposed to a, a job and a hobby and, and a passion. I think that uh, just means you've got a, a good eye on what you want to achieve. And more often than not, I mean, it's... The difference between getting a record heard and not is uh, getting it in the right people's hands, and I think that's where ultimately some of that uh, education might come in. Is that where part of the success of TV Rock kind of uh, came from, from that business background on top of writing great tunes? Yeah, I think so. Um, ultimately, with uh, when it comes to music making, uh, the music will, will have the final say. However, you know, I think people vote with their with their feet um, on the dance floor, and and ultimately, if they go and buy on on iTunes or wherever else they come across it. Back in those days, it was in store, of course. But uh, these days, it seems you can't well, you can't even buy that, a physical single anymore. So it's it's changed. The nature of business has changed. But I think if you the, the main thing though is that the music's got to be the the central focus to everything. And I, I try. I try and uh, always focus on that because if I try and write a top 10 hit, um, more often than not it fails because I think sometimes you lose that creativity by trying to get a commercial result out of it. Is that what you always strive for when you and Ivan, uh, the other part of TV Rock, go into the go into the studio? Do you just sit there and, and you just want to write a tune that makes you feel good? Definitely. I mean, it's got to be something you want to play and you want to, you, you know, you're listening back to it and getting goosebumps, you know, that's the that's the ultimate moment. So I find that if, you, if I can't play it in a the set, then I've done something wrong. When was the very first time as TV Rock that you had one of those moments that you went, oh, oh, we, we might be onto something here? Well, uh, probably the, one of the, the first re- one of the first remixes we did, we did for Blur when we did the song too, um, and all of a sudden they got pressed on vinyl, and you know we had DJs from Pete Tong to um, Paul Oakenfold and uh, all around the world playing this 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 record, this remix we did. And I was like, wow, this is just amazing, and uh, 
it wasn't. Uh, it's it, to be off. To be, to be honest, I mean, sometimes it's from the lesser known records and bits and pieces. You're just coming home in the car and you you put on the sound system and you just you know love it and you, you get that reaction. But I think um, there's nothing better also than when you play one of your own records and at a festival and you see everyone's hands go up in the air and that's. Uh, that's a pretty amazing, special feeling. I mean, some people will sit at their desk all day and uh, never get a pat on the back and never get a congratulations for a job well done. Um, you know, you can have 10,000 people with their hands in the air going crazy to your record. I think you get that instant gratification. You know you've got a good record on your hands. Now, for us here in little old NZ, it uh, was back in 2005. Flaunted was the one that, uh, you know, just took you from an- another uh, bunch of guys that wrote house music to something a little bit more. You had a bit of chart success with that. How did Flaunted change the whole perception and the whole, basically, respect for TV rock in the uh, music industry? Well, I guess that was a little underachiever, and that was sort of, uh, on a side note, that was how we started our record label, because I... Um when we first made it, I went to uh, to Sydney and played it to uh, Ministry and EMI and uh, BMG and Sony and said to everyone, um, would you like to license this record? I think it could work. And they all said no. Um, and I came home and you, know, you either throw, your, throw in the towel and say, well, that record didn't work. Or I said, no, no, I want to start my own label and I'll put it out myself. If no one really wants to do a good job, I'll put it out myself. And we, we went on to sell a couple hundred thousand copies of the record. So that was a, a great result. Um, and I guess even made more special by the fact that we actually got to do it ourselves on our own label. But um, it certainly creates a, a, created a, a big buzz and um, a lot of awareness for us. We played some great parties and some great festivals off the back of that and made us into sort of, I guess, a household name. But with that also came um, expectation, I guess, and it's sort of been... Um, it took a couple of years to, to win back some of the clubbers. I think um, sometimes people, when you, when you have success, be that with Sneaky Sound System or the presets or any of those big export bands, um, they go from being your best fans to your, to the haters pretty quickly when uh, you become you're seen as commercial in their eyes. So we made it a point of going and remixing some of the the big international DJs and making some really clubby music. In addition to our stuff that we play on radio, so we we have a good balance of um, clubbers uh, getting into our music, but also you know people knowing about us from radio as well. Now, Melbourne in particular, it seems to be a breeding ground for world-class house and electro producers with yourself, Dirty South, Denzel Park, all making it on an international stage. What do you think's in the water in Melbourne? I just think we've got a really good um, crew of people here that are very, um, I guess, affirming of each other and really wanted to support each other's music, so... Uh, like Dirty South, he's you know he's a very humble cat. You know he just loves his music, and on you know when he made Evermore, the Too Late Booty, um, I was playing before Pete Tong that night, and he came in and I played it the second last track before Pete started playing, and Pete saw the reaction. He's like, "What is this record?" So I gave it to him and said, "Here you go, buddy." And uh, he went back and played it four weeks in a row on Radio One, but Dragon. To, much to his credit, managed to back that up with this consistent, consistent product, and that's the key to any success, I think. And we all have a friendly rivalry that we all want to aspire to be better producers and uh, outdo each other, with it, you know, but in a very friendly way. And it's the first person that we, uh, you finish a record, you send it to all the guys that you mentioned, and there's a few other people as well that we do from Australia. You know, um, it's just a, a great, great time to be involved in music in Australia. I think. And do you think with some of those guys that you send your tunes out to, like your hook and slings, and, and like that are your friends, they're not afraid to go, oh, maybe that's not your best work, or oh, maybe it needs a bit of retweaking as well? Definitely, definitely. Um, oh, I'm never one to hold back when it comes to uh, reviewing a product, be it uh, good, bad, or, uh, or, in, or indifferent. I mean, the other day when the, the Pop Alleys were uh, finishing up their album, they said, can you have a listen to this album? And, uh, you know, some of the records have said, hmm not so fantastic yet but at the same time uh, that, that, that feedback hopefully helps them get the product that they ultimately need and sometimes if you get a bit too close to a record you, you fail to see um, the wood from the tree so to speak and you just need someone else to come in and say hey have you thought about putting that little bit over there or losing a certain element and that's you know I, 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 none, none of my friends would ever have a go at me for um, speaking my mind because it's only for the I guess the best intentions for the project and hopefully they they would all say the same about my music as well being constructive with your criticism 
Yeah, definitely. I think if it's constructive all the time, um, I'll listen to anybody's opinion. But at the end of the day, we're the ones who have to put our names on it, and that would be the same if they said to me, hey, look, I reckon it's great. It works for me. I'd say, <laughs> go for your life as long as you're happy. I mean, that's the at the end of the day, when it leaves your studio, if you're happy with the result and, you're, and you want to play it, if only, I always say, if only one other person in the world thinks I'm right, well, then it was a job well done. It was worth doing. Now, your latest mix CD is entitled Neon Essential 10, which is also a feature as part of your radio show, where you play the 10 biggest uh, records in your crate. What would someone expect from listening to Neon Essential 10, the, uh, the latest mix CD from yourself? Well, it's certainly like a, an adventure into Clubland. I mean, it's 10 records from uh, from Neon, from my label, so everything I sign I like to play, and I think that I try and always play as upfront as I can. And it's a good mixture of, I guess, a couple of big ones that people might be kept, but to be aware of already, but then hopefully some underground stuff that's coming through and some, some lesser-known producers that are on their way up. So hopefully it's a snapshot of, one, it's a great dance floor experience, but two, it's uh, some, some new stuff coming through. Now we've got a couple of rapid fire questions. These are pretty much kind of short answer ones for you. First of all, being you are TV rock, what's your favourite TV show? <laughs> Entourage. Now, are you any relation to Guy Smiley from Sesame Street? No. Not at all? <laughs> I'm not. Your favourite TV rock record? Probably in the air. Now, apart from yourself, who is the most exciting person in dance music right now? Ooh, Avicii. Now, this one is not just a one-word answer, but what's next for Grant Smiley? Uh, probably Prime Minister. Prime Minister? And you're going on tour as well? Yes, as Prime Minister, yep. <laughs> as, and as... I'm, going on, so I'm going on tour. Uh, I leave on Thursday to Europe. Uh, I've just got a quick little whirlwind tour uh, just doing uh, Estonia and Switzerland, London, Amsterdam, Poland, uh, Hanover, and then out just for a two-weekend run. And finally, where can people find you on the internet? Maybe they want to do some stalking. Maybe they want to, uh, you know, maybe the female viewers out there have said, oh, Cleo Bachelor of the Year. Oh, I want to find out a little bit more about him. Maybe some people have gone, oh, I love that TV rock stuff. Where can they find you on the net? Yeah, best place to go is uh, facebook.com forward slash uh, Grant Smiley or same on Twitter. So go and check us out there. Now, Neon Essential 10, mixed by Grant Smiley, features tracks and remixes. You've mentioned them. Axwell, Dirty South, Pendulum, Denzel Park, and, of course, TV Rock themselves. It is available right now on iTunes and also Beatport.com. Grant Smiley, absolute pleasure talking to you this morning.